Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on agriculture and aquaculture. All right, agroecosystems, that's kind of a label we can give to our agricultural uh, places where we have crops growing. It is still an ecosystem. It's still something that exists in the natural environment uh, despite our manipulation. So let's refer to it as an agroecosystem. Here's some of the basics. How do these agroecosystems differ from natural ecosystems? Well, there's six main ways. Ecological succession is halted. It's kept in first stage or around that stage. Uh, think about what crops look like. There's really not a variety of trees. Uh, of course, it depends on what you're growing. If, if the purpose is timber, um, then you're going to see a forest of trees. But if we're thinking about typical produce, if you're thinking about vegetation and, and stuff like that, you're talking, you're not getting a wide variety of trees. You're not getting to this uh, kind of climactic community as we've discussed in previous lessons. So ecological succession is halted. It's definitely manipulated and controlled by humans. The food chains and biological diversity are simplified, certainly. Um, in one area, you're typically going to see one crop, uh, one particular kind of produce that's grown. Um, in terms of the amount of animals and plants you're going to see in the region, well, yeah, of course, biological diversity is going to be reduced and simplified. Uh, you may see a lot of insects there, uh, but if the insects are causing a problem as a pest, then certainly the farmer and the workers are going to want to deal with that. More on that later on in the lesson. The focus is on monoculture rather than a diversity of plants. Typically, you're just growing one, a singular mono uh, crop, one plant species. Uh, you will get some scenarios where a plot of land is used to grow two, uh, but it tends to be more complicated with the application of water and the soils and the timing of how those are growing. In the long run, we've realized, hey, one plot of land, one kind of crop, it's just easier to maintain. Um, crops are planted in neat rows and fields. That's pretty typical. You, you look along, you know, you're going along a highway, you look out the window and you, you see those, you know, neat rows before you. Of course, I'm giving you a little perspective here. But yeah, you see neat rows of crops, whether it's strawberries or orchards uh, or corn, whatever it might be. It's, it's very typical to see it planted that way. And of course, yeah, plant life has been manipulated. It didn't happen that way naturally. Uh, Agroecosystems require plowing, unlike how it is in nature. There is no known natural occurrence where you get the level of plowing uh, that human technology has caused. Yes, you have burrowing animals like a mole or something like that, um, and you have worms that burrow, but you're not going to get the amount of tilling and plowing uh, in nature. So that's a very unnatural thing um, that has to happen for certain crops to be successful in that area. And they may include GMOs or GMCs, genetically modified organisms or genetically modified crops. Uh, more on these in the near future. Um, there is some controversy with GMOs. I, I think we need more science. We need more studies on the potential harmful benefits, but some scientists are convinced uh, there are no significant harmful uh, issues here in terms of what they may do to a human body in the long run. Uh, but genetically modified organisms, that's uh, human manipulation. So that's a huge difference from a natural ecosystem. By the way, plowing, how sustainable is the soil in the long run? Uh, there's this dichotomy here. On, on the one hand, you have areas, especially in, in parts of Europe, you know, where, where ancient Rome existed, where for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, you've had plowing occur in these areas and we're still able to grow crops. So there it seems to be sustainable. We still get crops out of here. Now, maybe it's something special about the soil in those regions. We don't know yet. But then you have other cases where, for instance, the Dust Bowl in the 1930s in the United States. Uh, talk about more about that in, in the lesson, definitely. Um, there are areas where uh, plowing over several decades ended up being a significant problem. Now, combined with a drought and high winds, of course, it's going to be worse. But 
you have some cases where excessive plowing seems to not be a big deal, but in other areas, it actually ends up being a big deal where you get more erosion uh, and more damage to surrounding communities and destruction. Um, so it's kind of this unanswered question currently.